Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concepts of addition and subtraction as we are going to use them in geometry. Uh, it's a little more abstract than uh, the typical addition and subtraction that you have seen in, in grammar school and just adding and subtracting, but conceptually it is, it is the same thing as what we have always done. Uh, keep in mind addition is going to be going from something small to something bigger and subtraction is going to be going from something big and then down to something smaller. So let's take a look at addition and subtraction. Addition. This is a theorem and if the same segment is added to two congruent segments then their sums are congruent. And I'm going to let you call this addition same because we're adding the same segment. So your reason and proof would be addition same. So let's take a quick look at that. What might this look like? We might be given um, a couple of congruent segments. AB is congruent to CD and we might want to prove that AC is congruent BD. So if we had a diagram, just a segment that looked like this, and I'll put my labels on there, A, B, C, and D. Okay. And we're given AB is congruent to CD. So that segment is congruent to that one. But our goal here is to prove that AC is congruent to segment BD. Okay, so I want to prove that these segments are congruent. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add the same segment. We're going to add the same set of points BC. So BC here is reflexive. It's the same set of points. If we add BC to AB, We'll get AC, and if we add BC to CD, we're going to get BD, but aren't we adding the same thing to congruent segments? Uh, and we are, so we will get new congruent segments. Then we'll be able to prove that that, that AC is congruent to BD by addition of the same segment. We have another theorem that says if congruent segments are added to congruent segments, then their sums are congruent. So now we're not going to add the same set of points. We're going to add congruent sets of points. So our givens are going to look a little bit different. Um, and our diagram is going to look a little bit different. So let's take a look. I'm going to do the diagram here first. Let's say we have something that looks a little bit like this. And we've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I will give you that AB is congruent to FE. And I will also give you that BC is congruent to ED. Okay? So I have to give you that information. AB is congruent to FE. Those two segments are congruent, and you can see that with the tick marks. And we also are given that BC is congruent to ED. So what can we prove here? Well, we can prove, change my color here, we can prove, like, so if AB is going to be the same length as FE, and BC is the same as ED, right, aren't we adding a one tick mark and a two tick tick mark, if we added those together, that's going to be the same as this one tick mark and that double tick mark. But here we're adding congruent segments. We're not adding the same set of points. BC is a different set of points than ED is. So we are able to prove by addition congruent that AC is congruent to FD by addition of congruent segments. 
So congruent segments added to congruent segments are going to form congruent segments. That's different, though, than adding the same set of points. We're adding different sets of points here. So keep in mind, addition same is going to be different than addition congruent. And we can do the same thing for angle. Same angle is added to two congruent angles, then their sums are congruent. And that diagram would probably look something like this. So we might have something like this, where we might have Angles 1 and 2 are congruent. And then we know that the larger angles here are also going to be congruent because we're adding the same set of points. I'm going to add the middle angle, angle 3. So 1 plus 3 will equal 2 plus 3. We'll do a proof like that later on in the presentation. And then we can do the same thing that we did with segments with angles. If congruent angles are added to congruent angles, then their sums are congruent. We'll call that addition congruent. And again, you're going to have to differentiate in your reasons for, for proof, same versus congruent. Okay, Adding the same set of points or the same angles is different than adding congruent angles. And again, addition, we're going from something small to something big. Now let's take a look at subtraction. And again, these are interchangeable with segments and angles. Just make sure the problem is dealing with an angle versus a segment. But if the same segment or angle is subtracted from congruent segments or angles, then their differences are congruent. This is the long way of saying subtraction of the same set of points or the same angle. And we're going to start, I'll give you another example of this, but now we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to have to go, we're going to be have, we're going to have to be given something big and then try to prove something smaller. So let's go ahead and draw our diagram. And again, I'll use the A, B, C, D, and use a segment. Okay. But this time, we're going to start by saying that A, C is congruent to B, D. So we wanna, we're starting with that, and we're going to want to prove that A, B is congruent to C, D. Okay, so I'm going to give you, go back to blue here for you, I'm going to give you that AC is congruent to BD, and we're trying to prove that AB is congruent to CD. So you can see here that AC and BD are big, and A, B, and C, D are small, relative. Okay, so we're going from something big to something small. So if we subtracted B, C, that middle segment, if we subtracted that out, our left behinds, A, B, and C, D, are going to be the same because we're taking the same set of points, B, C, away from congruent segments A, C, and B, D. So... The left behind CD has to be congruent to AB by subtraction of the same set of points. And we are going to, in our proofs, we're going to talk about BC being reflexive. So we'll make a statement that BC is congruent to BC by reflexive and then subtraction. And you'll see that when we do our sample problem in a few minutes. And then we can subtract congruent segments as opposed to and we can subtract congruent angles, as opposed to what we did up here. So if congruent segments or angles are subtracted from congruent segments or angles, then their differences are congruent. 
This is going to be called subtraction congruent. Here's your reason and proof. Okay. This in parentheses is the reason that you would use in proof. All right. So to give you an example, well, let's go ahead and might as well use the same thing we did for addition. But now we'll go in the other direction. So I have our diagram A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. And I'll give you that BC is congruent to ED. And I will also give you that FD is congruent to AC. So those are also the bigger segments are congruent. So our given is AC. Hello. You have a friend today too? Yeah. Is he in there? Yeah. AC is congruent to F. D. Hello. Oops, that's a D. And BC is congruent to ED. So what can we prove? We can prove, I bet you any money, that AB is congruent to FD. And we can do that by subtracting, right? These two big things are congruent, so we're going from something big to something small. Going from big to small, but we're subtracting not the same set of points, not just one set, but different sets of congruent points. BC and ED are being subtracted to give us that those two smaller things, AB and FE, are congruent. And our reason would be subtraction of congruent segments. So once again, a reminder, when you're going from small to big, think addition. See? And when you go from bigger to smaller, Okay, so let's take a look at a sample problem that involves addition or subtraction with our angles. And this will model a couple things that I'm looking for uh, from you, what, what my expectations are. Okay, and we're actually going to redo a, a problem that we you may have done for, for classwork. Um, and we did some, uh, we worked with supplements here. But I think you're going to find addition or subtraction works a little bit better. So we've got our diagram. We're given that angle WXZ is congruent to angle VXY. So angle WXZ indicated it's congruent here, is congruent to VXY. And we want to conclude or prove that angles 1 is congruent to angle 3. So in this particular problem, yeah, we are going from something big to something small. So you should be thinking subtraction here. Going from big to small, subtraction. Well, what are we going to subtract? Well, if we could take this angle 2 and kind of pull that out, if you can imagine that angle being pulled out of there, well, we leave angles 1 and 3 behind. But aren't we pulling the same set of points? And isn't that common to both of our big angles? And it is. Angle 2 is common to our big angles, Vx, Y, and Wxz. So that's what we're going to subtract out. So if we're going to add or subtract the same set of points, we're going to indicate that and I'm just going to use angle 2. I'm going to say angle 2 is congruent to angle 2. And that's reflexive. Everything is congruent to itself. This is the set of points that I'm going to subtract out of here to get angle 1 congruent to angle 3. So then my final reason is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by subtraction 
and we're subtracting the same set of points. So here's a helpful hint. Anytime we're subtracting the same set of points, we are going to use this reflexive, okay, or if we're adding the same set of points. So anytime it's addition or subtraction of the same, we're going to use reflexive, and you're going to tell me what set of points you're adding or subtracting or what angle you're adding or subtracting. So we'll see that quite a bit in our classwork. Uh, you'll see this often in our proofs, and we will practice this more when I see you in class.